What's up guys, welcome to our King of the Strip vlog. This is gonna be like the vlog video where I'm gonna try and vlog like the whole weekend pretty much, how it's gonna go. We are Friday afternoon and uh, we're Thursday not- afternoon. Thursday afternoon. Oh, that's how early it is, that's right, we're, we're going up <laughs> Friday. And look at this, the engine and everything's in the car. Yeah. <laughs> What a time. Um, but that being said, it has not been without its own troubles. Uh, <laughs> so we uh, we picked up a, another kid's bike that was a really good price. Uh, we decided to shoot down and grab and Rex was gonna shoot down and grab it last night because obviously we're leaving for King of the Strip and that was gonna be the only time that was gonna work. And it was all the way down in New South Wales. So it was a bit of a hike and Rex went to leave in the van, the big van out there, which uh, we had planned to take this weekend because we use it a lot for like the camping and everything else. and we have a little setup there. It's, it's a really well set up vehicle for doing exactly this. And the plan was to go. It was gonna be our main camping vehicle. Um, and he got just up the road here and the gearbox exploded. So it's been, had a noisy gearbox forever. I've been driving around for five months uh, with a noisy gearbox and it hasn't, it's been fine. Rex jumped in it uh, for 10 seconds and it exploded. Um, have to tell him that uh, we're not at the not at the drag strip, Rex. Yet, yet Rex, you, you didn't have to go that hard with it. We could, we could not have any broken cars. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, obviously that cooked us. So Rex ended up having to take the cruiser all the way down to New South Wales last night to get this bike. So it was a pretty good practice run for the cruiser, I suppose. At least we know it's okay. But you know, the van, I literally just ordered tires for it to, that were meant to get done today for this weekend. Just yeah, ordered all this cool. stuff to service it and get it ready to go and. Now it's got a broken gearbox. So anyway, if you're watching this and you have or know of anyone that has a five-speed manual gearbox for a 1.9 TDI Volkswagen, whether it be Transporter or Caddy, I think they're the same. We need a gearbox. So please let us know. Drop a comment. We desperately need one because that's been my daily. We use it all the time. Now it's cooked, which sucks. But anyway, moving on from that. So we're also meant to get a new windscreen in the missus car today before we left. And there's a big crash between here and where the mobile windscreen guy is and they closed the highway and he couldn't get here. So now we've got to go up with a smash windscreen in the missus car too. So fun. Like I said, the not been without its own, own problems. But anyway, this is the ducting we were talking about at the end of the last episode of our prep. And this is where Rex plans on ducting directly from our inlets that he's made straight to the turbos uh which hopefully should help and work really really well and really nicely so fingers crossed that all works out for us sure. bo is uh bo's not coming so he's getting his pay docked letting the team down <laughs> not even coming to support us when did that happen hey it's news to me oh yeah. sorry you had to find out like this rex what the fuck bo <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, Bo's not coming. Anyway, now we've got to figure out how we're going to load up all our camping stuff and get all this sorted without the van and um, what cars we're going to take instead of the van. And Oh man, what a time. Anyway, at least uh, the race car, touch wood, is um, together and okay. See how that goes. So I'm just working on trying to charge up everything. Make sure everything's charged. I've got the draggy charging, all of the GoPro batteries, the Insta360 batteries. Um, I actually need to get my big camera down here on charge. The drone batteries, everything's charging up. Trying to get everything charged. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Whoa. So uh, in previous years, what they've done is they've actually run a test and tune at the Benarabi drag strip on the Friday night. So you can go out there early, which is what we plan on doing this leaving tomorrow, getting up there for Friday, setting up camp, making a day of it, uh, and being able to do some test and tune with the 80. <clears throat> uh, like most of you who's know, who know, watch the channel will know, uh, the King of the Strip is bracket racing. So it's, it's dial your own. It's not about just being the fastest. It's about knowing your time, being the most consistent. Um, and that's what makes it really fun. So you don't necessarily have to be the fastest car there to win your class because it's bracket racing. But obviously, because we've made changes and things are different and we've had zero time to test, we have no idea what to expect from this thing. So it's a good thing to get there on the Friday night at the test and tune. That way you get some numbers, get a feel for the car, you know about what it's gonna be and you can start, uh, you know, dialing in properly. Now, obviously if you can't get there by the Friday, if you're looking to go next year, or if you're looking at watching this video and you wanna go, it's not straight away dial your own eliminations. They, there is hours of basically practice runs uh, before they finally get to eliminations, which is further on into the night. So it's not like you have to know straight away, but obviously being able to get some test and tune done well, will be a huge advantage. Mmm, look good. Mm. We even uh, got some radios uh, so that this year, um, this time when I crash the drone at the start line, I can just radio Rex and be like, Oi, that drone you just saw, grab it. Instead of uh, having to telepathically tell him. All right, there we go. Bit of ducting. 
It's a little bit agricultural, but so that'll get the clamped. Job. Yeah, so I just I'm just going to um, take them off and just tuck them down, put the filters back on for the drive up there, and then just hook yep. them up once we're uh, ready to rock and roll. For racing tour, I'd sort of almost prefer to get rid of those plumb backs and just chuck the filters on, but I don't think there's enough bonnet clearance. So for anyone wondering, the reason for that is that oil in the intake or in the air going into the cylinder uh, makes things a lot more knock sensitive. Oil's, oil's not good for, for detonation and knock. Um, yeah, oil's bad for that, so. It's bad. That's why Rex would like to do that, just to eliminate the possibility of drawing oil in and uh, causing some detonation. But anyway, that's what the water meth's for. All right, guys, fair bit of stuff to pack up. Um, we are taking the families this year. We're all going up, um, which will be nice to spend some time and have them come along as well for this event. Um, sort of the only event of the year that we actually really go to anymore. Uh, we really do enjoy this event, guys. If you're watching this and you're thinking about it, come to this event. It's such a good event. Um, yeah, like I said, it's really the only one we still make an effort to get to every year. It's just such a cool event. It's just good vibes. It's really, really good. But um, yeah, so there's a lot more to pack this year than normal because there's so many more of us going up, but yeah, should be good, should be a good weekend. Um, and we have, since the first one we attended, we have talked about taking the dyno up with the boys from Dobinson's and stuff. We've, we've chatted about it. It'd be really cool to run a dyno competition alongside the drag racing competition. Um, we'd call it Queen of the Strip, which I think would be really funny because uh, obviously there's some big power you know, four-wheel drives to go up there, but a lot of them are manual, you know, and, and not as fast. But it'd be sick, but the, the logistics of it is is really difficult, obviously. Rex is normally racing there. I'm usually trying to film and get foot uh, content and all that sort of thing, uh, and just help out with the racing side of it. So, you know, tr just getting the dyno up there would be a bit of a hike for us. It'd be logistically hard to get the dyno there to start with, but then there's also the fact that someone's got to operate it and actually do the dyno competition, which with just the two of us, if one of us is racing, um, like even with Bo coming to help out would be great, but you still need, I'd, I'd end up just operating the dyno all night, which hopefully we get to a point where we can have the help and do it properly one year, but it would be cool. I've, I've never really been to a drag racing event. Mind you, I don't go to that many of them, but uh, I've never really been to a drag event where they run a dyno competition at the same time. Um, but yeah, it, it would be cool to be at a drag strip and so show the parity between making power and having a fast car and how important just the setup and, and how much important things go into making a car fast more than just power. So it would be cool to showcase that. I mean, you go to Summonats, you go to Power Crows and stuff, there's always dinos there and they run dino competitions with that sort of thing. But I don't think I've ever been to a place or a drag event where they're running strip and times with a dino event going as well. Because um, yeah, it, it's good to show that there is a huge difference between making power and having a fast car or, or setting a car up to be quick. Um, and yeah, calling it Queen of the Strip, I just thought would be funny because you can have King of the Strip um, and then you Queen of the Strip for all the, the dino queens. But uh, anyway, one day hopefully, but not at this stage. All right, we made it. How's the setup on it? Whoa. Room, room, room. I'll, um, I'll send the drone up probably tomorrow when it gets warm or bite again and um, show you the setup. Cruiser gets parked here. But yeah. Pretty, pretty good. Not good bad, good not setup? bad. Yeah. Hey? Thumbs up? Yeah, the setup. Anyway, we made it mostly problem free. It's pretty cruisy drive up. No dramas. It feels weird being so organized in here so early and set up. And um, yeah, they're just about to start the testing tune. So we'll get the draggy out, charged all my camera gear, charged the draggy. I don't think I forgot anything. So yeah, uncanny how organized and everything we are. So um, yeah, happy days. Keen to get this. Uh, Weekend underway and see what the 80 does. The roof cage is gone. We are prepped and ready for racing. Rex yep. has done some adjustments. And uh, yeah, because we're sponsoring the event this year, we've got our own little little area right beside the tower. Couldn't ask for a better area to set up. Get some data. Also, guys, as always, discount code in the description if you want yourself a draggy. Best little tools for doing any sort of testing you want data you want to see how quick your 60 foots are going to be eighth mile get yourself one of these codes in the description get a discount let's get some data so because the track is wet from the rain we've had they're only running eighth mile um so yeah 
I mean, it's probably good. It means we get to keep a bit of secrecy as far as what it's going to actually be like, but we're going to get the data we need to know what it's going to do tomorrow. What do you reckon, buddy? Really race car? Yeah. Watch Uncle Rex race the yeah, Land yeah, Cruiser. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's still getting ready. He's going to head over in a minute. Look at that setup. And we are right next to the boys. That that side of us is reserved for the skid factory. So that'll be Woody, which would be good because I actually uh, have a few questions to ask about the 6BT patrol they did because we're also doing a 6BT patrol the moment for a customer. But I need some advice on for a few things. But it'll be cool to um, finally meet the skid factory boys properly and we camp next to them. That's going to be, you know, cool. All right, <clears throat> first pass of the night. Let's see how the big girl does. I think I've remembered everything. Well, high boost, water mats on, launch buttons on. All I've got to do is push the Bluetooth button to start the logger when we're a bit closer to going. GoPro's obviously on. lane where he started so I'm not sure what that was. Wait for him to come back and find out. And uh, just turn just the tires. Immediately blew the tires off. Yeah, okay. I was like, what well, the, the hell? Track stuff, after you launch, the track staff are cleaning something up in that lane, so I was a bit worried. That... Nah. Yeah, okay. I just, yeah, just blew the tires off, so I got off it, and then I realised what had happened and got back on it. Yeah, right, right. Okay. Right. Well, we'll try again. So the only problem with being right up here near the tower is that I can't actually see the readout for the times from where we're standing, so unless I walk down there. So what I'm probably going to have to do is just film on my iPhone. Um, I was using my Canon M50, but I don't really like it. It's not a great camera. Uh, the autofocus is real weird, doesn't work properly. And then I can only zoom so far, whereas on my phone, I could actually probably zoom from here all the way down and actually see the numbers. So anyway, Rex got the yeah, got to put in a ball drop. So. Try again. We'll go out again and have another go. Have another crack. But the button works well. Like it. Yep. Yeah. Converter good. dump and everything works good. Yeah, yeah. Floppy trans drag. Uh, definitely locked. We've also got two new tyres on the front as well. I don't know if I've mentioned that, but yeah. as well as the seat and the seatbelt, there's new tyres. So I checked them before. We're running 32 and a half or four at the moment. Start yep. there. Sweet. And our ducks are ducted to the intake.
back off the starting line for some reason. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I reckon we're good to go now. Seven ninety-seven to the eighth. That's the fastest, or well, quickest, I should say, quickest time of the night. I don't know if it was the fastest. I haven't checked in the mile an hour, but yeah, quickest time of the night at a seven ninety-seven on um, pass number two. So we'll keep working at that. So that was launching at six pound, and now we're going to increase it to two pound for the launch each time, and basically just gauge um, how hard we can launch versus keeping traction and um, how it feels, and try not to break anything. So trying to find that medium traction, launching with enough power to get the 60 foot down and not break it. So, we'll see how we go. Alright, so the drag you reckon 798 and the track reckon 797. So pretty pretty accurate, pretty spot on, which is awesome. Um, and I was wrong, that's not actually the quickest time of the night. The, there's a little orange 40 series cruiser here that has wheelie bars and stuff on it that apparently went 7-0. So uh, it has gone faster. Uh, but yeah, Rex is saying that just then at six pound tire spin as you have seen from the, the launch a little bit of traction issues there so uh, we're gonna drop the tire pressure two pound try again at six and yeah essentially if it's if it's overpowering the track at six there's no point in risking breaking stuff by trying to launch it more more boost uh, if it's already overpowering the track so. yeah uh, well, I sort of explained it in the other GoPro anyway but yeah it, it wasn't immediately when I left that it did it it was when I pretty much stomped it after I started to move the boost came up and just blew the tires off so yeah some some throttle modulation as I launch will be the trick yeah but either way it's oh I suppose yeah you could try another two pan and just as long as it doesn't break traction off the launch and then you're gonna throttle it we'll see all in that drive 34 with some, yeah with, with some, some heat yeah with some heat so yeah we got some air out of these tires and see if that helps so there's, uh, there's meant to be some weather coming in, there's meant to be some rain coming, so we're trying to get as much data as we can while the track's dry. That's why they're not running the quarter, they're only running the eight, because the back half of the track's wet. Yeah, apparently there's meant to be more, more rain coming in, so we don't even know how tomorrow's gonna go at this stage. Um, and we're glad we bought such a huge big camp, <laughs> because um, if it starts raining, it'd be nice to have all this undercover space. But anyway, you get that. is in different lane this time as well yeah, so yeah. less yeah. tire pressure different lane we'll see see how it goes
pretty good um, off the launch that like it would have been a good 60 foot um, yeah that just sort of missed that uh, one two shift a little there I might have to adjust that shift point actually what I will do I think instead of uh, instead of changing that shift point I might just up the limiter a tiny bit because it is set I think for 6,000 which is uh, pretty low because this thing obviously doesn't rev to the moon but I could probably bump that up a bit probably be a better idea Scotty in the uh, pie van. Half mile. And that thing's a whip. It makes like a thousand horsepower. Nitrous Duramax. Absolute unit. What did you reckon, Draggy? 771. That's a bit better. 60 foot, 1.92, we're still not 60 footing like we were. All right, 768, and uh, it's just, it was just starting to spit on that pass and now it's started to rain, so it's everything stopped, track's getting wet. So at a 768, that's still not our PB. Uh, so when we ran the 1194 last year, I think we see, uh, did 80, uh, 8 at 760 flat. Well, 768, which is close, but uh, even then, last year when we PB'd that 1194, uh, we actually had another run which we didn't PB because uh, we didn't do very well in the second half of the track. But we actually 60 footed and eighth miles better than our uh, PB time. Uh, so you know, it, there is more potential there. We're still not even sort of to where we were last year, but um, the tracks tracks colder, a little bit of moisture in the air, a lot more moisture around. So yeah. A few things working against us, but uh, fingers crossed this rain doesn't set in and hopefully we can get some dry track and keep racing tomorrow. I hope so. I really hope so. Anyway, we're um, we're having some dinner, cooking up uh, at the moment. So we'll have some dinner. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so they've just called it. Um, no more racing tonight. They can't, they won't be able to drive the track out. Um, so they're doing like a burnout practice. So because this year so many sponsors came on board to support the burnouts, um, I think there's like $2,000 cash prize for the best burnout, which we originally were gonna add to. Um, but instead of adding to that, we put up 500 for the quickest DT instead. So uh, broadened the, the prize pool a bit there. But anyway, they're gonna do like a skid practice instead of racing, which uh, is a shame we can't keep, keep going, but at least we know uh, we're, we're pretty close to where we were last year as far as our PB went. So yeah, hopefully dry track tomorrow uh, with a bit more dialing in and where we're at now, we will better or best our PB again. So I just freaking hope we can get there tomorrow when it doesn't keep raining. Oh, burnout, Flinny. Ready? Do your burnout. Whoa, uh-oh. Gonna do another big burnout, buddy. Burnout, 
You gonna do another burnie up? No, Daddy. Oh, Daddy, you're gonna hold this, are you? Yeah. Okay, Daddy's gonna do a burnie up. Yeah, go. I got your burnie up. That's pointing it at your face. Turn it around. Oh, now you can see. Do it Do a burnie up. Whoa. 